This is the word of God from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter twenty-four, verse thirty and thirty-one. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the sky, with the power and great glory, and then He will. Send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to welcome you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to our very first international、um, Sunday morning service. In, the, in God's house, and after we had in the six months national lockdown, we dearly miss each other, and we dearly miss to gather together to praise and worship God、uh, in the God's house. So I know you know we are not allowed to you know, move around, and you know, you know we are not allowed to you know give kuch to each other. Though we love to you know give kuch to one another. Shall we just say one another in this? You know, good morning, and I miss you so much. And then, shall we say good morning? Yeah, good morning. Yes. Let's try to be in this, you know, cheerful and joyful in God's house. And yes, I dearly miss you all. And then, number one, I'd like to say thank you for your faithfulness in the midst of a very, very difficult time. Your brothers and sisters have done very, very well with your continuous commitment to the Lord. In this, you know, you have joined our online ministry, and in this, you know, also you continuously you know, pray for one another and pray for in this, you know, God's church, and then your faithfulness in this has been in a wonderful driving force you know, for our church ministry. So, shall we give all glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Today in this year, at the door in this, you know, I and in this Chris and then Carl and Sean, we talk about it. I know we all. It's not only us. You know, everyone in the world have gone through a very, very difficult time. But in the midst of that, there are so many things we can be thankful, isn't it? Yeah, there are so many we can think. I'm gonna talk about it. You know, there are you know so many God's good purpose in this kind of time of separations and the time of、uh, hardship. So we give all the thanks and glory to God for His protection and His faithful and the constant in His work of salvation in our lives and in our community. And then you know, I give in this you know glory to God on the night. I got a contact from you know one sister saying I'd like to join Tabernacle Baptist Church, you know through our online ministry, and the God is still working. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Amen. Shall we do? You know when I say God is good, you can say all the time. When I say all the time, you can say God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. So we give him all the glory. Let's pray. Let's pray. Yes, Father God, we are gathering here in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to give you praise and worship and all the glory for the great things you have done in our lives and in our family and in your church and in our community, Newbridge, and this nation, Wales. And all around the world, Father, we thank you for Jesus, and we thank you for your mighty work of salvation through your church and your people. And we give all the glory that in the midst of this time of difficulties, you have been so good, good Father, and you have been wonderful and faithful God who continuously bless us. And use us in amazing way to shine the light of、uh, truth and the light of love and care of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, Father, we open our heart and open our mouths, and we joyfully shout Hallelujah! 
and we come before you and we worship you, and we open our heart and pour in our heart to find our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the way, who is the way and the truth and the life. So, Father, help us to praise you and worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for our in this, you know, returning to your house. And we thank you to see our brothers and sisters in Christ in your house. And we thank you for this very first our live streaming service. Lord, we pray that through all this, you, know, you will continuously let uh, your light of eternal salvation shine upon people in the world who are living in the hopeless place, who are living in the fear of uncertainty for their future. Lord, we ask you to cry, we cry out to you to stretch out your might hand and stop this coronavirus pandemic. And we ask you to protect innocent, innocent people. We thank God for you know, all our key workers, NHS heroes, and then carers, all key workers. We ask to bless them, bless their family, and to protect them under your wing. Lord, we also bring the name of those who are suffering. Lord, we remember, pray for our sister Jean Hardwick, who is in the hospital. And we pray for our sister Brenda Brown, who is recovering from the operation. We also bring the name of Val Cox, who will have a knee operation tomorrow. And also we bring the name of our sister Marge Palmer, who is in the self-isolation for her coming operation. And also we remember and pray for our brother Jeff Champion. And Lord, we ask to shine your light of healing upon them and heal them and raise them with your mighty hand. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. Because I was so excited, I forgot one thing important. You know, today is our first day to you know, live streaming. And it's over our Sunday morning and evening service. And I have heard in this, you know, you know, a brother in America, a brother in, in this, you know, South Korea, they recognize, you know, we are doing live stream. So I should welcome, you know, people who are joining with, uh, through our, you know, live stream. Anyway, I want to welcome you all who are joining with our live streams. Anyway, you know, we are going to stand and we are not allowed to sing, but we can, hmm. Don't open your mouth, but we can say it in a joyfully, hmm, with all our heart. Our heart is the most important thing. As God spoke to his servant Samuel clearly, you, man, look at the outward appearance, but I, Lord God, look at your heart. So shall we all stand up? And shall we joyfully, hmm, our very first hymn, O oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder. Oh, 
Please be seated. I know we want to sing at the top of our voice to praise and worship God. But it is important you know, we Christian you know, learn the lesson you know, wherever we go and whatever situation we are in, we do worship God with all our heart. Amen? You know what? In this, you know, I still remember in this, you know, the video clip I saw how this North Korean Christian underground they have to put their life together. Yeah? And I wept when I watched that in a, in a video clip. You know, you know, this lady left her house when there was a snow like that. She could, they, could, they could meet in somebody's house because there, there was in this authority in which, you know, kept their eyes and you know whether there's any Christian. So they had to meet in the minus, you know, 10, 20. You know, when snow was like that, they had to gather in the top of the mountain. But they couldn't sing. Because if somebody heard, they would make a report. They did like what, what we just did. They hummed. But you know, I will never forget their tears were flowing on their cheek. And gave all the innocence of their heart and you know, thank God because they could gather and worship. Amen? Amen? We can't complain. We got this wonderful in the sanctuary, isn't it? We got a freedom together. Though we can't sing, we still thank God for that. Amen? Amen? <coughs> now it's time to invite Antipat. Well, actually... <laughs> I have heard you know, how many people in this, you know, send me a message and they talk to me how they are very blessed you know, with Antipas' story. And the people encourage really you know, you know, Antipas. So, well, normally in, you know, on our online in the service, which we recorded and then put on our in this, you know, church in this, you know, Facebook, I normally call you know, Antipas, where are you? But Antipas is here already. But I will still call Antipa. Well, you know, I've got a you know, message from our brother Rob James, you know, who who is doing wonderful in this, you know, you know, work for the Lord in Pembrokeshire. He asked me to pass in this, you know, the thank you message from one of our congregation. Your children's story made her day. When she was so down, you know, you know, she watched your children's story. That really lifted her. Up. So we thank up all that. So though Antipat is here, I still would like to invite in this Antipat and calling her as a usual. Antipat, where are you? Good morning, children. Lovely to be here again with you. Um, I hope you're all settling back into school now and um, en enjoying seeing your friends again. Well, um, today's story is about a little boy who was walking in the park with his dad. He was enjoying running by the river, sitting under the trees, skipping across the grassy hills. I wonder if he did roly polies from the grass. Um, I bet some of you do that, don't you? Yeah, I used to do that when I, I was little. I'm too old now, I'm too stiff, I couldn't, if I got down on the grass, I couldn't get up again. Anyway, there he was enjoying himself and all of a sudden he stepped in something soft and he looked down and he stepped in an anthill and it was full of ants and they were everywhere because an anthill is an ant's home and this, well, first of all, this is an ant, just in case, there's a lot on there, look, just in case you haven't seen an ant uh, before, um, you probably find them in your garden. Um, if you look very closely, they run everywhere. They're very, very small, and this is something that an anthill might look like, sort of a, a sandy mound and um 
I stepped in one once and it was like a grassy mound and it was on this sort of pathway and I stepped in it and as soon as I stepped in it I'd never seen one before but I knew what it was all these ants rushed all over my foot and I, I soon shook those off because they, they do bite and um, so never been bitten but apparently they do bite so what did he do? Well, he crushed a few ants as well. Couldn't help it. I expect I did when I was little, when I sort of stepped on it. You bound, if it's the ant's house, you're bound to crush some, aren't you? Well, he was a bit upset. And being a little boy, and never having been stung by an ant, he was quite sad. And he said to his, his father, Daddy, I've killed some ants. I didn't mean to. I didn't see the ants until after I had stepped on their house. I wish I could become an ant and tell them I'm sorry. Now, you can't talk to ants, can you? They don't understand human talk. So the boy felt that there was no way he could tell them how sorry he was, except by becoming an ant, and he couldn't do that. God did something like that for all of us. He looked down on the world, and we were like little ants. He saw us running here and there, not even knowing he was looking at us and cared about us. So God said, I know what I'll do. I'll become one of them, a man. Then I can tell them how much I love them and show them how much I care for them. And that's what God did for us when Jesus was born. God became a man to show us his love. He lived in our world in the life of Jesus. He talked to us in words that we could understand. Now we know what God is like. Jesus showed us. Jesus is God who became a man. Shall we say a little prayer? Dear Father, Thank you for becoming a person like me. Thank you for Jesus who showed me all about God. Amen. Bye children. Working for Christ in the community. These are the announcements for this week at Tabernacle Baptist Church, Newbridge. Every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday at 9.30am we have our daily devotions. Please join us to start your day with God's Word. Links are available on our Facebook page. On Wednesday at 6.30pm, join us in the Bible study series called Rebuilding Life with the 20 Pillars of Christian Faith with Pastor Peter Cho. Once every fortnight on Thursday at 7pm for 7.30pm, there is an online deacons meeting. Please note that this is only for the diaconate of Tabernacle Baptist Church, Newbridge. On Friday at 5.30pm, please join our Dancing Through Quarantine to praise and worship with our digital worship dance team. Also on Friday at 7.30pm, we have our online fellowship Zoom meeting. Please join us for a time of fellowship and blessing. Tabernacle Baptist Church Newbridge is reopened for Sunday morning and evening services. The morning service will start at 11am, while the evening service will start at 6pm. Due to coronavirus restrictions, we are only allowed up to 30 people in the building at one time. Please contact Pastor Peter Cho to reserve a seat for you and your family or friends. When attending our services, please remember to wear a face mask at all times and to social distance. We will also provide hand sanitizer at the entrance and exit of the church. Join our live stream Sunday services. The morning live stream service starts at 11am and the evening live stream service starts at 6pm. For those who cannot join our services in the church, you can join our live stream services on our church YouTube channel. Links will be on our church Facebook page. 
Live stream services will also be uploaded to our YouTube so you can re-watch it at a later time. Every Sunday afternoon we have our online Sunday school. Children aged 10 plus can join from 2pm, while children aged 5 to 9 can join us from 3pm. Please contact Pastor Peter Cho or Lynn Champion for more information and the invitation email. Last but not least, please protect the NHS and each other by social distancing, washing your hands and in doing so, save lives. Please pray for the global COVID-19 pandemic, national leaders, NHS and key workers, the sick, people in tears and God's church and people. Stay safe, God bless and thank you. I'd like to share in this new, you know, read, you know, new God's word this morning from in this new Gospel of John chapter 13, verse 36 to chapter 14, verse 6. My message this morning is, there is God's good purpose in the midst of our hard time, especially through the, you know, our experience and the time of separation from those whom we dearly love. So Gospel of John chapter 13, verse 36. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why I can't, in this, in a, in a, can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can you know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. May the Lord bless reading of his word and anoint that word of truth and make it a word of God to be living and active in our heart and life. Amen. Amen. Do you love animal? Do you love animal? Yes, I love. I love animal. When I was a young boy, you know, our family had always cat or dog or both. I love animals. And then some times ago, I think it was like a month ago, out of blue, we had one baby hot in a hedgehog turns up in our garden. I fell in love with the in this, in the baby hedgehog straight away. And then I just felt like when I you know a person is trying to talk to a baby hedgehog, I, I just felt you know baby hedgehog look at me as soon as we had in this eye contact, I fell in love. My heart got melted. And the baby hedgehog is going to stay in our garden half an hour and then it's going to disappear. And the following day it turns up again, but it brought a little bit of concern because baby hedgehog turns up during day. And then it's the one, you know, one of our neighbors, she shared with me her concern, well, Peter, actually the hedgehog should turn up during night, not the day. We should keep eyes on in this, this hedgehog. Okay. Throughout the time, it turns up during the day. So I just felt okay. I should in this phone RSPCA and then get the you know, you know, expert advice. And then this, you know, this expert in, this, in RSPCA said, you know, Mr. Cho, thank you for your phoning me. And then I believe that there's some problem with the baby hedgehog. I strongly advise you take that you know, baby head, so ASAP to the A vat. So they arranged in this, you know, one vat in the, 
in Newport for me to take. So in a, I took in a, I put the you know this baby hedgehog. You know my children fell in love with the hedgehog already, and they named the hedgehog Hochi. So Hochi, you know we put the Hochi in the box, and then you know um, Yana came with me, and then when we brought this in a in a hot in the box and a nurse came out from the building and she took over the nurse in the hot in the box and she said thank you so much now you can go i said what i no no i, I can wait i can wait i can wait for hot she said, no you can go you can say that because I was thinking actually in my mind, if there's any need, you know, somebody look at the hochi. I didn't talk to you know, my children not to bring the you know, false you know, you know, hope or expectation. Even I was thinking to adopt him. <laughs> but she said, you can go. Why? why? And then you know, our nurse will have a look at it, and the vet will have a look at it, and then we will look at the hochi. And my heart was broken. Because I expected this nurse to have a look at it, give some treatment, and then she gave me, give this hot back and they bring back home. I was devastated. So on my way home in the car, Yena comforted me, Dad. <laughs> and then in the house, I was, oh, my in the two other daughters in this, in the gave me coach, and my wife gave me in this coach and the comfort. Then I phone in the vat to talk to them what's going on. And I was ready to say, I'm willing to adopt the Hochi if it's necessary. But the vet said, no. <laughs> the Hochi will be looked after in this, you know, in this, you know, with uh, one of their nurse, who is an expert on HO, and they will release to the in this, you know, nature. So I say, what do you mean? Is it, there will be no chance we can see Hochi again? He said, I'm afraid to say, I don't think there will be any chance. My heart was broken. I saw Hochi only four times. I fell in love. It was a terrible experience of a separation. And that brought me this message of a separation. Why God allowed this separation happen in our lives and in the world. The separation we experience, some of them are temporary, but well, in a way, in this world, some of them is permanent as well. Any expression, experience of a separation is so painful for us. The Bible tells us the first separation ever happened in this entire world and universe was sadly God's separation from man due to man's sin. God warned man, if they don't listen to what God says, what sort of consequence they're going to face, and sadly it happened in the Garden of Eden between man and God because of sin of man. As the prophet Isaiah said, you know, your sin has separated you from God. And under the separation from God due to our sins, we men have suffered with so many separations in our lives. We have heard in this, you know, recently some university students have been told to do self-isolation due to increase number of uh, all the students get infected with the coronavirus. But may I say here, we should have a big sympathy upon those youngsters. Yes, I don't agree with any you know, misbehavior, misconduct against the you know, you know, regulation of a government. Because this uh, COVID-19 is you know, in life or death matters. But we should think about what we are like. I'm not sure, Byron, brother, what you are like when you were a young boy. But I, you know, when I was a young boy, I was full of energy. In this, you know, I wanted so many things. And I couldn't stay home. And my mom always said, son, please stay home. I couldn't. 
And now they're under lockdown. This is time we must not try to put the finger upon anyone. We should just encourage to one another. Amen? Yeah? And you know, this during global pandemic with COVID-19, many in the world have suffered not only physically, but also mentally and emotionally with all this separation from our beloved one. And my family are going through this uh, suffering with the separation because uh, our first daughter Mina has gone to Cardiff University. She is just 40 minutes in distance by car. It's ridiculous. I can't see my Mina. I've been devastated. But thank God because we got a still technology so we can speak to each other with this, you know, to see each other through the, all this app. Only 40 minutes isn't from us, but we are suffering with separation. People ask where this COVID-19 pandemic comes from. Well, I will share with you before in my message in this, during this lockdown, some people try to blame God. Oh, I want to bang on my head in, this, in all these people. You know, in the world, they insist that I don't believe there is God. But when something disgusting happens, they want to blame God. Come on, stop making no sense. You don't believe God exists and then you want to blame God? We should take you know, what a scientist says so humbly. Where this COVID-19 come from? None of us know, surely. But this scientist says this. Her personal opinion is the COVID-19 is a response of nature against women's misbehavior and misconduct upon nature because of our greed, because of our innocent, sinful desire. And while well, we have heard from our brother, you know, Dr. Chris Palmer's in his, you know, um, Bible study, yes, I agree with what he said. This is God's warning to our man as well. When we look at the, you know, God's word in the Bible, very beginning, when God created man in his image and likeness, God gave in his clear role and job to man to look after in his holiness in the creation as a steward to look after. As I shared with you before, that's why we Christians should be at the very front line to fight against all the global warming, something like that. If you look at you know, Mark chapter 16, Gospel of Mark chapter 16, our, Jesus, our Lord you know, Jesus Christ asked us to preach good news, not to all men, to all creations. Amen? To all creations. Have we done that, really? Have we really done that? Because of all this, you know, misconduct and misbehavior and destroying all the forest and the nature. Because of our sinful desire. So we men in this world have suffered with the COVID-19, including separation from people we love and want to be with. However, we hear good news from the Bible story this morning that Jesus talked his disciples about the coming temporary separation from him for God's good purpose. And Jesus had told his disciples that he would be with them only a little longer. And the way he would go, the disciples would not be able to come. When you read the Bible, always go into the story. And think about how disciples of Jesus would feel when after they left everything behind and then you know, they follow Jesus. And suddenly Jesus said, I'm going. You can come where I'm going. It must be terrible. They must be terrified. So you will abandon me? 
The disciples were feared to be separated from Jesus. So Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? Where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow me later. Peter, who was terrified and then terribly feared to be separated from Jesus, we can see from the today's story, he promised to follow Jesus even to death. But Jesus replied to Peter, look, Peter, are you really sure you want to lay down you know, your life to follow me? I tell you the truth, you will disown me three times before rooster crows. And it happened, isn't it? To his disciples who were terrified by hearing the shocking news of a separation, coming separation from Jesus, the Lord Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. When we experience separation from our beloved one, our heart can be troubled so easily. However, if you put your trust in God and trust in Jesus, your faith will open your eyes our eyes to see God's gracious hand is still working. Though we don't see with our eyes of flesh, we can see with our eyes of faith. I was terrified as a dad whom dearly loved my Mina. When I heard this in lockdown, oh, so I can see her. But I prayed, Lord, I put my trust in you that you will be with Mina. She's also your daughter. You will be with her. So I'm not going to worry. And I could have a peace in my mind. We all experienced separation in many different ways. It's not only my story. It's everyone's story. The matter is how we deal with that in the matter of separation in our lives. As our Lord Jesus said, if we put our trust in God and trust also in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we can put everything in our God's hand. Not let our heart be troubled. This reminds us the parable of the lost son, isn't it? The father of the lost son. When he was asked by his in the younger son, you know, Dad, anyway, you will give me some part of you know, what you have, so give me now. He could say, no, it's mine. You have no right to say I'm still alive. But his father allowed this thing to happen. To let his younger son to learn the lesson with his uh, trusting in God. That after some years of this you know, terrible separation from his son, his beloved son, when the younger son squandered all the money he received from his father and dying under starvation, this son realized how such a blessed life he had under his father's love and care and provision. And when the younger son returned to father and knelt down before his father, there was joyful reunion and a happy ending. However, God used our separation from our beloved one and the people around us for his good purpose in a way to teach us how people around us are so precious and important for us. During national lockdown, we have scattered the church. I thank God with all my heart for this 
wonderful Sunday morning, very first our service, as God allowed us to reopen our God's house. But during this international lockdown, when we are scattered church circumstance, how many sisters and brothers in Christ have shared me how they are terribly miss you all brothers and sisters. How miss we miss each other. So I know we must not give a coach. We can shake our hand. But whenever we see, we can express all our heart. I will learn the you know, I love Kuch. Kuch is my favorite word in Welsh. And I've learned to keep people Kuch wirelessly. Kuch, take my heart. Good to see you. And a sister in the Lord openly shared with me, Peter, during this national lockdown, I repent before God. I ask God to forgive me. Because I took that freedom we can freely gather in God's house and praise Him, worship Him for granted. Now, under this national road, this national road, I'm stuck in the house. And I terribly miss my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I terribly miss the time of worship in God's house. Yes, we all know, we have learned from the national, you know, God's word church is not the building. But well, rather than we miss this building, we miss this gathering of God's people, isn't it? So we thank God all the more for the lesson. How we should be grateful for every single moment we gather together in God's house and praise and worship Him. And we should give thanks God with all our heart, every single person in my life. And in God's family, how they are so precious and important. When God allowed us to gather. You know, when our brother Len was suffering, I was terrified because I couldn't go and see the terrible separation. I was not allowed. But thank God, you know, for the last day, our, Lord, our brother Len went to Jesus in glory. Hosta said yes. And I was over the moon when I heard the news. After the fighting and struggling, because I wasn't, I'm a minister of the church. They said, no, I'm sorry, because of COVID-19. Rather than I complain about it, the time I struggled, I couldn't see my floor when it's time. I gave thank God all the more for the last minute I could go and see him. And the red word of God. And God pray for you know, God's blessing upon him. The last word I heard, the last word I heard from my brother Len's life was Amen. Amen. We should be grateful for all the blessing we still have from God rather than we complain and grumble about this uh, coronavirus pandemic. It doesn't help. It makes us feel more you know, depressed. Sharon, myself, and the you know, Chris and Carl, we talk about this. I really don't agree what you know, media is doing. You know, one lady I met on the street, she said, Peter, I'm suffering with the depression, and I'm afraid to pick up the my, you know, you know in the remote control, because as soon as I see on the TV, there are all these terrible negative, negative, negative. There are so many things in a, in a positive we can bring and encourage people. Our world is still beautiful. I'm not sure whether it's appropriate to stay here. As Louis Armstrong saying, what a wonderful world God has created. What a wonderful people we have all around. If we go back to the Bible stories, when Jesus said, you know the way to the place where I'm going, Thomas replied, we don't know where you're going, and then 
No one on earth knows we know in the way you are going. And then in our Lord Jesus in the answer was, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the truth because he was the word in the beginning. And the God's word clearly tells the word of God is truth. Jesus is the light because after all men were dead spiritually because of our sin. Only through our faith in Jesus, we can have eternal life. As Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die, ever. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? What would be your answer? Shall we all say, Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, one of our sisters said, Peter, I feel so down. You know, I got stuck in that, all this. You know, what I said is, sister, don't just don't think of it. Just praise Him. Praise God. You know, so, you know play the CD. You know, all these you know, wonderful hymns and continuously praise Him. You know, so, you know that was uh, happening in the morning and then in the afternoon. This sister said, Peter, I feel a lot better. Praise Him. Jesus is the way to the heaven where man can have a complete form of a reconciliation and the eternal union with our heavenly Father. But we should remember only through Jesus. Jesus is one way, only the way we can come to the Father. Not because of my good work, not because I'm a good person, but only through our faith in Jesus, we can come to the Father and have that wonderful reconciliation and complete form of eternal reunion with our Father in heaven. Only through Jesus. And people will ask me, why only through Jesus? Because Jesus is the one, the Son of God, who left in the throne and the glory of heaven. And then he came down to this world and went to cross of Calvary and suffered and shed the blood and died for our sin and rose from the dead for our eternal life. Pray the Lord. Amen. Amen. But you know, among those all the suffering Jesus went through on the cross of Calvary, can you think of what was the most horrible thing for Jesus? He experienced eternal and a complete separation, not eternal, complete separation from Father in heaven. For us to be reconciled to Father in heaven, this is a paradox of the cross of Jesus. Jesus suffered terribly. Let's not just think, okay, Jesus suffered for me. What sort of horrible suffering he went through for our eternal healing? As a, in the book of Isaiah said, Jesus was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. And then the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, can you imagine the six inch nail went through his hand and the feet? And what sort of flogging he had? What sort of bleeding he had? For that, with that, God, wanted, God has brought eternal healing upon us. Because Jesus experienced that complete separation from Father and the cross of Calvary, God has opened the way for us to come to the Father in heaven. Not only that, not only reunion with God, not only with, you know, our reconciliation with God. God opened the way. We all Christians will meet together in heaven. We will be united again in heaven. When Christ returns, 
All those who are sleeping in the tomb will be you know, caught up in the air. And the we Christians who still live in this world will be caught in the air. We will all unite again. And once we, we meet again in heaven, there would be no separation. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or death. Because our Lord Jesus Christ, who experienced that complete separation from God, will make everything new. Amen. Amen. That is the reason why. That is the reason why we should bring this good news of Jesus to our beloved one in the family. That's the reason why we should bring this good news of Jesus to people in this world. So that when we finish our end of a journey of a life in this world, or when Christ returns to this world before we die, we will all will be caught up in the air, and we will see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ face to face, and we will have that eternal reunion with our Father in heaven, and we will have that wonderful reunion in heaven and praise and worship God forever. So we thank God for Jesus, who is the way and the truth and the life, who has brought the wonderful opportunity of a reunion, eternal re reunion with our beloved one. Shall we all say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand up. And I should be careful what I say from now on. We are not going to sing, but we are going to hmm. Let's all stand up and sing. And let's sing hmm. How lovely on the mountain. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Let's all stand up.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May I suggest to you one thing? Today, when you go home, take the message in your heart. Speak to your beloved one how much you love them, how they are so precious in your life. And also speak to them how much God loves them. And our Lord will bless your beautiful feet. Amen. Let's pray for God's blessing upon us. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful time of worship. We could once again gather in your house and in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with our dearly beloved, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And praise you and worship you. So, Father, we thank you for this freedom and all the blessing and privilege we can freely gather and praise and worship you. And the Lord, we thank you for Jesus and, in, and in his experience of complete separation from you on the cross of Calvary to bring eternal reunion with you in heaven and with our brothers and sisters in Christ and all those saints of God. So, Father, help us and anoint us to go out and share this wonderful good news of Jesus and also love people in our family, our beloved family, and also people around us. Love them as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has loved us. For your kingdom and for your glory. In the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that unconditional and unchanging and unfailing love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give him all the glory once more. Praise the Lord. Come on now, join with me. Everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything, he's good in every way. He is always there for us, he's good in every way. Pouring out his awesome love, he's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy, he's good in every way. He gives us all we need and more, he's good in every way. Come on now, join, Come on yeah. now join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise We give Him everything, He's good in every way He is always there for us, He's good in every way Pouring out His awesome love, He's good in every way He fills us up with peace and joy, He's good in every way
give him everything. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. He's good in every way.